Hey guys, it's Bricktown, host of the podcast, Go Time, where every week I sit down with some of the top leaders of their industries and professions, and they share with you how they became the trendsetters of their industries. It's Go Time. Hey everybody, this is Greg Town, and I am your host for the podcast, Go Time, where I get the pleasure and the opportunity to sit down with some of the top leaders of, the, of their industries and some of the top players and the movers and shakers. And this week, I get the pleasure of sitting down with somebody not only that I know personally, but also know professionally, and that is Dr. Tess Mendapit, thank you, with Pearly White's Laser Dentistry and Aesthetics. Now... For those of you that have been in a lot of my trainings, you know that I tend to pick a little bit on dentists because a, a typical dentist will spend six figures and commit a, an insane amount of time for, of their life just to get the education to become a dentist. And then they'll go spend another six to maybe even seven figures just to set up their practice. And then they, you know, very rarely will they go out and do anything in regards to building a business or promoting or marketing themselves. Well, I can tell you what, Dr. Tess is definitely the exception to that rule. Uh, the reason I asked Dr. Tess to be with us today is for actually for two reasons. Number one, the fact that she knows how to be a business person and a business owner and how to properly pr promote her business. And number two is she is probably one of the most technology advanced dentists I have ever had the pleasure of being out there and stuff. So, uh, Dr. Tess, how are you doing? Great, great. Good to see you, Greg. Thanks awesome. for coming to my office on Rustway Waterfront. Where we have deck access and waterfront views in each of the operatories. Yes, yes, we're actually sitting in probably the best view and stuff, and uh, gore, I mean, gorgeous clear water today. Well, Tess, tell me a little bit about about your background and stuff. How you know? Because I mean, you've got a pretty extensive you know background when it comes to dentistry and the medical profession and stuff. Uh, you were just sharing with me kind of your 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 background and stuff. Share with me again, uh, you know your. Where you can't, you know, your background. Well, I was born and raised in Seattle, Washington, and did my undergraduate work at University of Washington, and chose to go to University of Southern California for my dental training. Um, I graduated in 1988, and then I practiced in North Seattle. I had my first practice on Crown Hill, um, and then when the insurance got a little hokey and they had some different uh, problems there, I left the private practice for three years and was the dental director below Harborview at, at Yester Terrace as the dental director there from 94 to 97. Um, met my, my husband, Scott Harm, and took a sabbatical and moved to San Diego from 97 to 2000. Um, I was doing traditional dentistry at the time, and when uh, Scott and I moved back from San Diego, I purchased a practice in Sumner, um, right next to the bridge to the old cannery uh, furniture warehouse. And uh, in 2003, I was introduced by a postcard that came in the mail about lasers. And in an hour and a half, doing a lunch and learn with uh, the company that was presenting lasers at the time, I bought a $50,000 laser. And uh, the rest is history. I actually had a paradigm shift with my practice. And I use lasers to this day for all aspects of dental work, wow. from your cleanings to your fillings, um, and now cosmetically. Mm -hmm. And I can I can attest I've been on all three of those levels and stuff in the cleanings and the the feelings. Sorry, mom. <laughs> and in the the cosmetic side, uh, I always love learning about how people get started into their business or how, or how they got called into the business that they uh, that they went into or that they started. So share with us a little bit about how you went into what you know how you went into dentistry. What what led you into dentistry? Oh, I, as a Filipino child, uh, first generation born in the U.S., dentistry or oral hygiene is not um, a, something that most families take, take uh, as something that necessarily needs to happen. So I had quite a bit of decay as a child and realized that being in the dental chair and watching my doctors taking care of me, that this was something that I'm sure I could do. And I have very small hands. And uh, so I thought, wow, this would be something that I could get into. And so at the age of 12, I decided at that point that that was my goal, was to become a dentist. Oh, wow. You are now the second person that I know that in their childhood years said, when I grow up, this is what I want to do, and mm -hmm. this is what you're doing. Mm -hmm. 
So that's awesome. What was it like when you first got started in dentistry? When I first started in dentistry, I actually bought the practice in, in Crown Hill of an older gentleman. So most of the patients were over 50 um, and I was under 30. Mm -hmm. So it was very interesting <laughs> to, to have grandparent type people around me. Um, turning 30 was a big event because then I wasn't considered a child dentist mm -hmm. um, as far as being the dentist who was so young, being with an older practice. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, you know, one of the things that I really admire about you is how you promote your business and I mean, how you become not only very active within the business community, but also the community that you, you live in and stuff. Uh, share with us kind of, you know, how you got, how you went well, in that. Well, when I moved the practice from Sumner and bought the practice and, and built a practice from scratch on Rustin Way in 2006, as you know, the economy was not doing great. Um, and I started with this practice from zero. So I knew that most of the patients from Sumner would stay in Sumner and selling that practice I wasn't able to really market to those patients and I knew that Sumner has a bubble over it. Most people don't leave Sumner. They think Tacoma is pretty far away. So I wrapped my car with my logo. I branded my business and I began joining um, a lot of different networking groups. Mm -hmm. uh, so the networking groups I started with were um, Network of Tacoma, where actually, Greg, I brought you into Network of Tacoma, um, and I was a chamber, Tacoma Chamber Ambassador for at least seven years. Uh, I also joined Kieran's Coffee Club. So I went out there, and, and unlike most doctors or dentists, I went out there and met business to business and one to one with mm -hmm. people telling them about the fact that I had become a laser dentist and wanted to set myself apart from other businesses knowing that I cut with lasers instead of drills mm -hmm. and that drills actually don't crack enamel, kill bacteria, unlike drills. Yep. And less than 20% uh, of my patients require anesthesia when I'm doing their dental work. Nice, nice. What type of uh, networking groups, what type of you know business type of chamber or functions do you look for as a, as a dentist to, to go join and attend? You know, that is one of those individual things where there are so many different networking uh, social groups in the Pierce County area. You just, you know, everything, even with the traditional Rotary mm -hmm. and Kiwanis, uh, which I was also a, a Rotarian when I was in mm -hmm. Sumner, you just, you know, my recommendation is as a small business, go out and try and be a guest for all those different mm -hmm. ones and pick and choose which ones are comfortable to you. Right. You know, do one that's a nonprofit that you can give back to the community. Uh, do one that helps you to find power partners that don't compete with you, but have the same clientele mm -hmm. issue that you can c combine services. Um, and then find something that you actually, another group that you might actually enjoy what it is they do. Mm -hmm. What would you say have been some of your best experiences in, in your profession? My best experiences yeah. in my profession? Um, giving people their self-esteem back, uh, making them feel whole again because they can smile. You know, the first thing you do when you look at someone is their eyes mm -hmm. and their smile. And your smile is actually a, a picture of your overall health. So if you're not smiling, there's a problem or if you don't or if you don't smell great in your mouth mm -hmm. that's another problem these are this is just a, a snapshot your smile is a snapshot of how the rest of your body is doing gotcha if you could go back in time and talk to dr tess when she first started out what would be what would be some advice that you would give her don't just you know back in the day you could just sign up for insurance and wait for people to walk in the door uh. And, and now you have to actively put yourself out there um, and spend some time marketing yourself and branding yourself. Mm -hmm. So there was, there was a time when everybody's shingle had their name on it. Mm -hmm. And now you don't do that. You actually give your company a name um, so that if you transfer the ownership of the business, the name isn't the name of the dentist, but it's the name of the business that you've branded your company. Mm. Um, and that way you have a logo and a brand. Uh, you know, you see Coke, everybody knows the Coca-Cola brand. Yeah. Everybody knows the Starbucks brand. Um, and you need to have a brand that is recognizable, at least to the locals, because dentistry is probably, 
you know, you figure a 20 mile radius in most cases, but like myself, because I've grounded and I've set myself apart, which is huge, set mm -hmm. yourself apart, be something different and offer something different that other people don't offer in your services. And so that when they see your name brand, they know people actually will leave. I have, a, I have actually families that have moved away from Tacoma mm -hmm. and they come here twice a year from Boise, oh, wow. from yeah, California, from you name it. I mean, there are people that have, have, you know, and I try to, we have, I have enough different people that use lasers mm -hmm. globally that we try to find a dentist in the area when my patients move. Yeah. And, and likewise, I have patients that have come from Whitefish, Montana, where there's a doctor, a dentist there who, who refers patients to me. Mm -hmm. And I've actually had people move to Montana and said, Hey, look up Mark. He'll take care of you. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, 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 you know, find people. I come from abundance. I, I don't feel mm -hmm. like I'm competing with other dentists because I use lasers. Yeah. Uh, they don't, I would love more dentists to learn how to use lasers. Yeah. I was going to say, I noticed that, you know, I mean, you, I know you, you for sure use, use uh, lasers because I'm one of your patients and I can only think of one other commercial where I heard that a dentist is using lasers. I don't even know where at in the Puget Sound mm -hmm. region and stuff. Um, you know, it, is it still a fairly new, is, is it something that are, is still fairly new coming into the dental world? I'm an early adapter of technology. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I picked up lasers in 2003. Yeah. Um, and I've been feeling the eyes on my back for a few years. Um, and now there are, the second wave of adopters of people that say, hey, she's sticking with it. Mm -hmm. And I think there's something to this. And now that there's the cosmetics that have come in, uh, that's another another um, benefit. So aside from using a laser orally for decay and health, I can actually plump lips with the laser. Mm -hmm. I use the laser to smooth and, smooth and um, remove lines and wrinkles around the mouth and face. And I can also reverse um, or reduce snoring and sleep apnea with my lasers. Wow. There's no injectables. There's no post-op time. Uh, and it's actually stimulating your collagen to regenerate. Nice, nice. And, and the new service that's coming uh, once I learn the protocols and do training is something called neck lays, where it gets that little bit of uh, chubbiness out from behind your chin that we all get when we reach over 40. So yeah, you, that's you can stuff. get rid of this? Yeah, that's stuff. Uh, let me know when, you, when I, you're ready to do I, that because I'll betcha. be your first person. You betcha. Is. You'll be my first male. <laughs> You'll be my first male patient to I do always that. See, you know, I always do like some of my my uh, promo shots and stuff, and then you know, yeah. I learn how to like stick my head that's way it. out. That's yeah, it. Yes. yeah. So, so, you know, I would never do anything with my patients that I wouldn't have done on myself. Mm -hmm. And there was a wave of the Botox and so forth. And I would never, yeah. I don't even dye my hair. I, mm -hmm. I've worked very hard for each of the gray hairs on my head. <laughs> uh, I'm very proud of those. Um, but I, you know, with the Botox and things, uh, I just waited for the lasers to come out with the technology to use it cosmetically, which is minimally invasive. Mm -hmm. There's no poisons and there's no post-op yeah. pain or discomfort afterwards. Awesome. Do you see more and more dentists adapting to the changes in technologies or do you see anything else new coming on the horizon for the dental field? There's so many changes. I mean, I haven't stabbed a tooth with an explorer to see if there was a cavity in it for years. Mm -hmm. um, so we're using like a Doppler. It's called a Spectre, which we actually take pictures of the grooves of the top of your chewing surfaces of your teeth. Wow. And it shows us a Doppler picture of where the grooves have decay. Hmm. So I use that as my map, to, as in preparation with my lasers to do your fillings. Wow. Um, a lot of doctors, instead of using lasers, picked up doing the crowns in the office, uh, same day crowns. I personally have a couple of those. I don't care for them. Um, and I choose to use my money in technology that actually is healthier for mm -hmm. the patient. Yeah. And I know for me, one of the things I truly admire is I can come and have pretty much just about any type of dental work done, you know, think knock on wood, it's nothing, nothing super major and stuff. And I can immediately go back out and work for the day. Yes. I'm not laid up with a swollen right. jaw. Less than 20% of my patients require anesthesia. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. What's that one question you wish more people would ask you? You know, the hard part is most people ask me, do you take my insurance? What I'd like patients to know is I actually offer a direct membership um, 
prepaid program mm -hmm. where a monthly, you have a, a small monthly charge and it actually gives you access to me for your cleanings, exams, and x-rays. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then you get, actually get 15% off of my services. Nice. So people don't have to have insurance to mm -hmm. come see me. You know, I, I'm anticipating we're going to sh see this paradigm shift in what I call the independent medical field, which is like uh -huh. dentists and chiropractors, to where we're going to see more members, you know, as insurance has gotten more and more, traditional insurance has gotten more and more res restrictive on your industries, we're going to see a more of a membership style to kind of offset that. I'm, I'm I've been watching that paradigm shift both in the in the, the dental world and the chiropractic world. Mm -hmm. Well, the medical world did it. I know that um, one of our fam my husband's family members, uh, he actually was wealthy enough to sign up with a doctor and pay him a few thousand dollars for his family mm -hmm. to get care from him, and then that doctor was his primary care as opposed to signing up for some medical yeah. program. Awesome. The hardest part for for insurance uh, patients is that everybody wants to know what's going to be out of pocket, but most insurance companies don't give you your dental benefits. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't even give you a dental card anymore, so you don't really even know if you've got medical or dental or what the companies are. Um, so I give the patient uh, more responsibility, mm -hmm. and, and we actually find out what their benefits are and give that to them. But you know, when we ask for a preauthorization, on the top of that form, it says this is not a guarantee of payment. So mm -hmm. now you've just wasted six weeks of your time doing paperwork that you don't even know what or if you're going to pay. Mm. Oh, wow. Very frustrating. Gotcha. What are some uh, ways that you know our listeners can connect with you? Is there a certain social media that you're very active on or websites that you'd love for them to go check um, out and connect with you? Pearly White's Laser Dentistry and Aesthetics. We're going through a brand name change and logo uh, design change. Uh, we should be launching if we're not already launched by the time this podcast comes out. Yep. Uh, but uh, usually the, the website is drtest.com. Mm -hmm. Spell out the word doctor, D-O-C-T-O-R-T-E-S-S.com. Um, we're active on Facebook. Um, my office phone number is 253-761-4041. Our address is 4041 Rustin Way. So you oh, want to wow. keep that kind of information <laughs> You want to make your information cohesive. Mm -hmm. I think something different that Greg's never had an emergency. Um, when I leave the office on Thursday evening, because I don't work in the office on Fridays with patients, the phone is actually transferred from my office to the cell phone. Yeah. And I take a, a month's worth of schedules with me so that I can catch those emergencies. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so I answer the phone, mm -hmm. which is really funny because usually when it's after Thursday evening mm -hmm. through till Monday when we come back to the office, I answer the phone, hi, this is Dr. Tess, and nobody really, it, it catches them off guard, yep. but you know how hard it is to, and this is something, again, providing a service that most businesses don't offer, mm -hmm. answering your own phone. Yeah, it's huge, that's huge. Especially I mean, after hours, yeah. because if you've got an emergency, which is rare for my patients because they take care of themselves, uh, <laughs> it's almost a prerequisite to, <laughs> to want to take care of yourself to come see me. Um, but you know, you call and you get a, and, and then you get a message and then you forgot that you need to, and you've got to call back and pull out the paper. And then they say that the, whatever the number is to follow, mm -hmm. um, and that they speak it too quickly. And so then you've got to call a third time and now you're frustrated. And then if you get an answering service, you may or may not get the doctor to call you back. Yeah. So I just answer my phone. Oh, wow, that's, yes. And, that, and that's, and awesome. that's helpful. Yes. 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 Any other parting wisdoms or words of advice? Well, or? for business owners, you know, engage with your with your clients. Mm -hmm. uh, make the connections. Um, try to find out, you know, because you're serving them. But what about the 250 people they know? Yeah. Are you are you educating your patients to be part of your choir to 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 share your message of what you can do and the service that you provide? Mm -hmm. Do you actually send out thank you notes? If you send out thank you notes for referrals from one client to another, make sure you have their business address and send that thank you note to their business mm -hmm. with a couple more business cards and maybe a gift in kind for a gift certificate to a local restaurant, which also increases an abundance for businesses and restaurants. Mm -hmm. You know, just think of think beyond just expecting them to walk in the door. Um, I also have a third party. Um, 
company that does the confirmations mm -hmm. for my patients' appointments, and they send out thank you. They send out uh, not only thank yous but also happy birthdays to people and reminds them of their appointments. Um, some people don't like text messages, but it will text you. It will send you an email, and we can custom that to how each patient wants to be rem reminded of their appointment that they scheduled. Awesome. And I'm surprised, as a dentist, you have not told our listeners to floss more. <laughs> well, you know, if you don't, you only want to floss the teeth you want to keep. What can I tell you? Yep. You know, the, the, the bigger difference here is when I did take up in my laser and started practicing using the laser, I was a microbiologist major. Mm -hmm. And it's all about biofilm. So those of you who are healthy and in spite of your really good oral hygiene of brushing and flossing, if your gums are bleeding, you have a biofilm issue. And so the other product that I use in tandem with my laser in hygiene to reverse gum disease, we use a product called Carry Free. And it's mm -hmm. a great system to, to help correct your biofilm if you have an acidic mouth. Yep. Yep. Um, I've also incorporated xylitol as being... Uh, another product that okay. we use for your oral hygiene. So, you know, it's, it, it's whole health. Mm -hmm. It's not just your mouth. Again, yep. you know, it's about the window. Your mouth is your window of your health, of, of what you've got, got, got going on in the rest of your body. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Tess, for joining us today. Uh, and I really do appreciate it. Thank You're you so welcome. much. You're welcome. Thank you. All right.